I've often been asked what's all this about, you know, differentiating life into survival mode and living mode. What's the use of these considerations? Yeah. And I want to show you what, in my opinion, how I can start using that. If you remember the pyramid of power, yeah, we have said all the resources up here, all the people are down here, and one of the biggest problems is that they are in competition with each other for these resources. So the biggest, biggest point is that they are in competition, that's why they cannot get out of their miserable situation here, and that's why from up here all the prices and everything is dictated to down here. So one change could be, yeah, they are of course here in survival mode. How can you bring them from survival mode into living mode? By changing the competition they are in. How, for example? Maybe, for example, through something that is already started to be discussed, an yeah, unconditional personal income. If all these had their participation in living mode, and an unconditional income is nothing more than that, it guarantees you that you can participate in living mode. It guarantees you your survival. It makes sure that your survival is guaranteed. Imagine what would happen if all these here yeah, are in a constant living mode. That means they don't have to take any job that is dictated to them or that is just available for very shitty conditions and very shitty payment. No, they can want to take the job they like. They can want to work the work um, they want to do because they don't have to anymore. They can ask for a fair price. They can ask for fair working conditions all of a sudden because they don't have to. They cannot be put into a kind of slavery anymore. Yeah? They, they are not dependent on up here anymore. So it makes them, it sets them free. What's so bad about setting people free? So once you relieve them of the competition through guaranteeing their survival, meaning you put them, put them into living mode, yeah? it changes this whole system here. What's the problem about that? The problem about that is this process here. You know, the process, if you watch the clip, why a crisis is also a chance, yeah? because this would mean to be in a crisis or to give a solution for a crisis where we don't have a vision yet today. That's why whenever you talk about unconditional income, you know, all the people always say, ah, that's not going to work, you know, nobody's going to take any job anymore. Who will do, you know, the lower jobs? Yeah, we need, you know, gutter cleaners or we need uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, people who clean and sweep the streets and all that. Who would ever do that? People would lay in their hammocks, people would, people would lay on the beach, they would do nothing anymore. I don't believe that. I totally doubt that. I think that's an argument from this phase in the process looking back to here. I can very clearly understand that if I had to do a job I hated, if I had to do a job I had to do or must do, of course I want to avoid that in the future when I can. But usually it's not the job I have to do it, it's the terms and condition of the job I have to do that I don't want to do. There's nothing wrong with street sweeping. It's just very wrong if society looks down on me if I do that. If I do the lowest job that society still needs, if I clean the gutters and that's something really important, if I repair your toilet, I should not be looked down towards from here to there. Maybe I should be looked up upon because I am doing something that not so many people like to do, which I should be honored or respected, especially. But as long as I have to do it or I will starve, nobody has to respect me for doing that. But when I start, when we start to live in a society or live on a planet yeah, where nobody has to do that anymore, maybe I would get the respect I earn for doing what so many other people don't want. Yeah? So, <clears throat> this is one result, I think, for example, an unconditional income could bring. It would change how our society works. It would still need people, you know, 
who uh, take care of the elderly. You look, you, you know, you, you clean them after they've been in the bathroom. But it would not happen in the circumstances of today with the degradation of today and the really little payment of today. Yeah? Whereas otherwise sitting in meetings and drinking coffee all day long, and of course I'm a little provocative here now, yeah, is something that so many people would want to do and maybe the respect would be a little bit lower for these jobs and a little bit higher for the kind of very exhausting jobs or the very dirty jobs or the very nasty jobs which are still needed. Yeah? I personally think that all the degraded jobs of today in a system where nobody has to do the job anymore but wants to do the job would be the upgraded jobs, the appreciated jobs, the respected jobs and many, many, many of the jobs we give so much value and credit uh, to today would not be so fancy anymore. Especially the jobs that would only deal with hoarding money, which is a clear aspect of survival. So the survival mode jobs and the people who are really good in survival mode jobs yeah, would get a little less attention and the living mode jobs and the people who are really good in living mode jobs. Of course, in a living mode world would get much more appreciation and much more attention. What are living mode jobs? Maybe teachers, maybe people who take care of health or healthcare systems, yeah? but not, you know, um, doctors who get paid millions and millions and millions because they do fancy things, but people who are there for other people. Maybe people who are in kind of more social jobs, taking care of other people, taking care of each other, which is an aspect of living mode not the competitive ways, which are just aspects of survival mode. So I'm thinking a lot about what, what would change in our society and how different kinds of jobs would change their respectfulness yeah, or their honor that you can earn in these jobs. Yeah. Think what would change in you know, taking care in the family of elder people. How would you treat you know, your kids? How would you deal with them? How would you treat your grandparents? Yeah? How would you deal with them? If you had time for that, if you could do it because you wanted to do it, and not because you have to work in two other jobs and don't have time for your kids or your grandparents. I'm pretty much alone here with my ideas, you know, because we're talking about the whole planet. Yeah? We're talking about moving the whole planet from survival mode into living mode. And I think what is missing right now, as we are right here, and I explained in the other video, is we need a vision for that. I'm not the one who can create the vision. Yeah? I'm way too small for that. And living mode means all of us together. All of us together. So I think only all of us together can create that vision that is strong enough powerful enough, you know, colorful enough, yeah, that it pulls us towards that living mode on a global, on a global plane. Yeah? What is there awaiting us? How will it be? Yeah? What, are the, um, what, what are the aspects that, that prove all the people that say it's never going to work, you know, everybody will just sit in this hangman. How will you, how will you prove these people wrong? By stating what you would do. How would you live in living mode? What would you do with your life if the whole planet was in living mode? If the participation in living mode was guaranteed for every one of us? If survival was secured for all of us? What would happen then? What would you do? How would you live? How would you create your relations? What would be your job? What would be your passion? What, would, you be, what would, would be your meaning in life? For so many today, the meaning in life is, you know, making sure you can survive, making sure your kids can survive, you know, building your house, building your fence, making sure that they get some kind of education, all aspects of survival mode. Just imagine that this is guaranteed, of course, on a basic level. How would life be? I think we don't have any ideas about that so far. We don't have that vision yet. We close our eyes and say, oh, that's never going to work. Very often because we think of the transition phase from here to there and all the problems from here to there. That's also not a vision. A vision is, imagine it's already there. 
maybe for 20 years, for 30 years, we have established living mode on this planet. What would be different? How would it be? How would you live? What for would you live? What would be your job, your passion, your profession, your meaning in life? What would be your part in this society? Yeah? What would be your part in the whole life? How and why would you be valuable for all that? Why would you think you would be here? What would you go for in your life? And you know what? My vision for that is yeah, that we all create that vision together. Every one of us. Living mode means every one of us together. Not one person excluded, otherwise it's not working. Living mode does not mean there are still people in survival mode, because they would always threaten living mode. So if we think of a vision, all of us together in living mode, let us participate in your part of the vision, in your answer to these questions. Let us give better answers yeah, for our future, every one of us. There's not one answer for the future. There's seven billion answers for seven billion individual futures that can be combined into one future for all of us. I would love to hear from you. Write it in our comments. Send us links to videos, little videos that you take. Um, go to all the channels you find to reach us and we kind of combine that and put it out there to show the world that there is a vision. There are enough people, uh, creative enough, clever enough, intelligent enough, you know, uh, passionate enough to create that vision and not just sit there and say, well, it's never going to work. No. If we all want it, and I want to as an aspect of living mode, of course we can create it. Why not? Let's show it. Let's see it. Let the whole world, if possible, participate in that so that nobody can say it's not going to work. And everybody can say, look, this is how it will work. This is how it can work. This is how we want to make it work. That will be a vision. What do you think about this? Leave a question or a comment.